it's gone. Light, in that sense, is a, a protective mechanism. But creatures that live much deeper in the oceans would adapt other methods for survival. One example is the Zawalina. The Zawalina look like a cross between a weird, weird spider and a very strange crab. But they have an odd, odd ability. They don't sense their worlds through eyes. They don't sense their world through ears. They sense their world through an electric field that they generate around their bodies. This field can be stretched out so that it senses everything that's moving around it. It sees its world by what impinges on this electronic field. And the interesting thing about it is, once they've locked on to something that they think is prey, they wait till it draws nearer and nearer. And all of a sudden, zap! Huge bolt of electricity jets out, stuns their prey, and a tentacle whips out and grabs it and pulls it right in. It hunts by using electricity. As we see the immense challenges that creatures like this would have to overcome in a water world, there is one last factor yet to explore. When the time comes that the people of Earth discover life in the cosmos, or that life finally decides to reveal itself to the human race, it may not be a biological entity at all. Rather than flesh, blood, and carbon, we might be met with steel and silicon, a machine. As we approach the theoretical planet Galileo, our final stop, we notice three extremely large craters on the surface. An asteroid collision with a life-supporting planet would be catastrophic. But on Galileo, something's different. We approach the surface and see tiny mechanical creatures roaming around. Although our journey thus far has explored an imaginary edge of the universe filled with biological creatures of all shapes and sizes, some scientists believe an alien world could instead be a land of synthetic machines, much like Galileo. Dr. Seth Shostak of the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or SETI Institute, believes that when life beyond Earth is discovered, our cosmic relative may be made of steel and silicon rather than flesh and blood. Any aliens that have gotten clever enough to build a radio transmitter and get on the air so that we could hear them have probably gone the next step. And the next step might be the development of thinking machines. To better understand the origin of an alien planet teeming with these types of machines, scientists say we only have to look as far as our own evolution of intelligence here on Earth. Specifically, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, you might say, is the science of making babies from scratch instead of the old-fashioned way. It's the science and engineering that tries to put together a mind by understanding how the mind works. Now, we haven't done that. We haven't built thinking machines, but people who work in that area seem to think that that's likely to happen within 20 years, 50 years, 100 years. It's conceivable that hundreds, perhaps thousands of years into the future, we may want to merge with our machines. Realize that in the coming centuries, machines could actually become smarter than us. And there's always the danger that our creations will put us in zoos behind bars and throw peanuts at us and make us dance, just like we make bears dance at zoos. But instead of merging with the machines, 
one day humans may in fact become the machines. And once the CPU surpasses the human brain, sophisticated software can give these beings an unparalleled advantage over us. If you've got artificial intelligences running on brains a million times faster than human and thinking a million times fast as human, they can theoretically do 10,000 years worth of thinking in three and a half days. Vast amounts of energy would be their lifeline to achieving such a feat. Once they harvested Galileo for all usable resources, these small robotic creatures, known as Sevils, could build a planetary highway to space. Then the next level of machines, the fissures, would have access to virtually an unlimited amount of energy for their survival. Just realize that the Earth only uses a tiny fraction of the energy from the sun. If the sun were this big, the Earth would be nothing but a head of a pin compared to the size of the sun. So we absorb only the tiniest fraction of energy from the sun. To harvest the energy from the sun, a theoretical structure known as a Dyson sphere could be built around it or any other star. A Dyson sphere is a gigantic sphere that is built to surround a star to absorb all the energy from that star. In this way, you can absorb the entire output of a star without getting burned in the process. Once a star is dissected for parts and its energy is depleted, the fissures could dismantle the sphere and propel themselves towards the next galactic battery. scientists are correct, this rise of the machines may even happen on a planet closer to home. As each year passes, new scientific findings are being made that push the envelope in understanding not only ourselves, but life in the universe. There is a whole new world, or rather worlds, ready for us to discover out there. And if life elsewhere in the universe is finally discovered, the sheer number of stars assures us that there is a diverse, colorful, and vast array of life to be found, and more alien faces than anyone could ever imagine.